Japanese distributor that there was a need. And within uh, two days of getting that request, we had robots on a plane sending them to Japan, working with TEPCO, welcomed us and accepted the, the, uh, our help. And from our perspective, you know, my only, it was, it was obviously the right thing to do. We knew we could help. We knew our robots had been designed for going into very challenging environments, not necessarily radioactive environments, but explosions, rubble, uh, hostile environments. So, so, so we knew we could help. We were able to train their people to operate the robot, and the packbots, our smaller robots, initially went in to the, uh, the reactor buildings carrying Geiger counters, radiation sensors, and cameras to understand the situation. And now the larger robots, our 400-pound warrior robots, are being used to actually remove rubble, bring in large uh, vacuums to suck up the radioactive dust, and um, really make a, make a difference in, in the cleanup. We didn't. It's uh, radiation when uh, can harm the robot in two ways. The cameras, uh, each pixel on the camera is susceptible to radiation, and over time, the CT camera image will degrade in quality. So far, that hasn't happened. The more serious problem would be if the robot uh, memory, the the dynamic RAM, in the ro gets. Um, damaged by the radioactivity. So far that hasn't happened. In an emergency crisis situation, what was clear was that we could help, and we did. And what we're learning is that our robots are uh, resist quite successful at being resistant to the radiation um, thus far, and so they continue to use them. And that, that's great, and hopefully they will uh, have a very long life uh, working and, and doing, doing the critical uh, job that they're doing. So uh, we're fortunate and happy we've been able to contribute. People were being sent into dangerous places uh, or, or uh, there was concern that this was going to happen. And so uh, rather than um, risk people being exposed to radiation, um, our choice was to immediately send what we had with hopes that it would survive. Thank goodness it has. Uh, and uh, we've been able to characterize the radiation levels so better decisions, good decisions can be made as to how, uh, whether to expose um, uh, and how, to what degree to expose uh, uh, people, civilians. And then with the warrior, go in and try to fix things. So it, it uh, really was done on a, uh, a very rapid turn and we no time to make any changes other than to put them on the plane, we're here to help. iRobot didn't want to, to put our people in the proximity of the reactors. TEPCO wouldn't allow it, and so we needed to train the TEPCO um, workers in how to operate the robot, but more importantly, TEPCO is faced with a very challenging task of, of um, dealing with this crisis. And they needed to think through how they were going to use the robots and make sure that the robots were going to be of value. And they have detailed plans about how to respond to a, um, a disaster that don't involve robots. Well, this was a disaster at the high end of what they had prepared for, and so that they were willing to say, well, maybe we can incorporate the robots into our rescue plans, but they needed to think through how that would work. And so it did take, uh, take a week or so before we could get the robots onto the site. Japan has some amazing technology for robotics, but it's a broad field. And so the, if you are looking for walking robots, robots that could, uh, uh, for entertainment, uh, 
the Japanese have a tremendous amount of that technology. What they haven't done is focus on incredibly rugged, durable robots to go into disaster areas and provide help. They haven't, they, they, they haven't needed it, they haven't invested in it, and so uh, it, not a strength uh, in, in that country. Whereas because of the United States' uh, involvement in Iraq and Afghanistan, the challenge is dealing with uh, roadside bombs and going into caves in Afghanistan. We have invested many tens of millions of dollars into creating some incredibly rugged, very mobile robots to handle this type of situation. And so we were better prepared and, and uh, we, we, uh, we went. I mean, these disasters do happen. And I think that uh, robots are viewed as um, useful and helpful. I think we're mostly, we're gratified that in face of a, uh, a global disaster, we were able to help and make a difference because that is part of, of our mission. And, and um, so we were, we were happy to do it. And, and um, uh, hopefully, if the world needs us, we'll be there.